in there, this is a field at the back of the farm. There's a shed or a barn. You can see the roof from there now. I remember in about 1965, Robbins used to me, I was Graham Robbins, he used to run the farm from Irving Thomas. He said to me once, he said, don't go in, Ricky, come here. Don't go in the barn because it's in danger of collapse. Well, 60 years on, I'm still standing. But this field here, there was short grass in here then. We have pigs in here. Uh, they, they be running around like lunatics on me. This is the back of the house here, or looking towards the back of the house. And down there, on the right between the wall and that shale by there, was a well. I don't know if it ever used or not, but there was a well there, quite fairly deep. And, uh, you could walk around there one time, but the gate is locked, so you can't. This is the part of the house where we used to sleep, up there. It was cramped, it was tiny, because, as you can imagine, the roof and the window was right down. Another boy called um, Graham Beach. He came round here once in his old Ford Pop, a sit up and beg car, round here going too fast, came into the farmyard and killed two or three chickens. Graham Robbins wasn't very pleased as you can imagine. Like I said, that was a dairy there, and the inside the door there, to the left, was a big um, slab. A slab of slate is about uh, four inches thick and about five or six foot square. I mean, or six foot square, I should say. And uh, on the right was the cooler. It was a stainless steel with a tank on top. You pour the, the milk out of the churn or to the container, into the container, and it, it dribbled down this um, cold. Water is water fed, it cooled the water cooled the cooler, if you know, if you know what I mean. And the milk came down through these, um, like a corrugated affair, and it goes down into the churn. And then, when it was full, you it was about 10 11 gallons. When it was full, you carried up the ramp by there and put it on a churn stand for the man to come on in a, in a truck to pick up the churns, do it twice a day. And uh, and by here, because there's a door there, there's a big um, two wooden doors there on the end of the cowshed by here. The fellow came from the brewery with a load of hops and they'd be steaming. And uh, oh, he had the smell, I can smell it now. I used to feed that to the cows. Not every day, but when, once you know, as soon as uh, the hops are gone, I'll be it. Till the next load, and it might be a month's time or two months' time, whatever. And yeah, that that ad on there wasn't there. That was um, that's a new thing for you know, well, it's a visitor's thing, though, isn't it? This road wasn't as wide as it, as it is these days because there's a gate going across here. A gate to go from the corner of that cow shed, I spoke to about here. The road was half as width. And sometimes it would hold a rally, a car rally. It came up from Tonkin, I thought, ever, down the farm road. And the, the gate had a latch on it, you know, like a, like a hook. Keep it shut. I need to cover it with cow shit. So when the rally drivers came down here, thinking they could get through, they couldn't. I'd have to get out and get their hands dirty on the cow shit to, to take the latch off. Rob them to go crazy. Don't do that, don't do that. But uh, yeah, we used to. I remember Jeffy Bowden used to do it and he started me off. And yeah, to put the uh, cow shit on the latch. And uh, just for devilment, really. Like I remember coming around here on a massive 65 tractor out to the farmyard. The tractor was rolled by there and the implements were behind my van. And um, 
I came up to one day to go, I don't know where I was going, going somewhere. And on the bend, like a bloody lunatic, came Roger Haynes in a Land Rover. When he saw me, it was too late. He smashed the front of his uh, Land Rover up. I laughed as hell. He wasn't laughing. <laughs> he wasn't laughing. He wasn't a bit amused that he shouldn't have been going so bloody fast. And I thought, he's gone on now because, oh, it must be now 40. Five, fifty, came up for fifty years ago. Uh, Forty-five years ago, anyway. There was um, on the radio. I don't know why I was on the radio. Came over as a plane had crashed in the Irish Sea. On board were two people, and they were killed. And there was uh, Price Haynes and his son Roger, who had been to a shooting next, um, thing in Ireland and they're on the way home and they crashed into the sea, killed them. But they were cracking people, they, they really were, they were probably got a bit emotional. They were cracking people, they had a farm up in um, Carafilly called Cum Farm. You got the top of Nangau Hill, more or less in that Carafilly and turned right. And it's down there in a dip. But they were cracking, they really were good people. Cause because we used to go up there and help with them. I remember planting kale up there on the side of the mountain. And Price Haynes, his father was alive then, and he had a, like a farm or a small holding. On the other side, because he's all houses up there now. But it really was, it really were the best days of my life. And we used to go up there and uh, we'd have, um, they used to feed us, you know what I mean? we are doing the haymaking, what have you. And we were uh, cracking. Set up, you'd have um, bacon, eggs, tomatoes, all that, white bread, as much as you could eat, actually. And then you'd have apple tart and ice cream afterwards. They were bloody really, they were really good. God, I can see them now. And he came on here on his land over, and I came on there on a massy, and bang! <laughs> <laughs> I laughed, I said, how good he did. As I, as I said before, the cow used to come across this field, like I said, this hedge one here and all that tree, and straight into the cow shed, and they knew their places. They knew where they had to go each door, and they go in and you put a, a chain around their neck, you know, you know, only a loose chain, and then uh, you put the, wipe the others with a rag, you know, like a solution in water, like um, I don't know, like a cleansing solution. And uh, what the others, and then put the the cow, uh, the milk machine thing on them, you know, on the on the others, and uh, off, off they go. When you please that one, go to the next one. Yeah, happy, they were really happy days. We did all that. Like I said, we didn't get paid. Well, me, I mean, I, I had a packet of fags, Christmas time, whatever. Maybe we might buy a packet of. Um, 25 or 50 MS each for us because you just look like super then and you know how the hay making there's a go turnip it's go swedes up here as well how we go pulping swedes and turnips and to give to the cattle in the winter time yes I really miss it like I said on the other video, up the top of there was a, like a mill, a, a corn mill. And you carry the bags, there were hundred and eight and a half bags. They were heavy. And the stairs on there, steps up heavy on that bush. They weren't very secure, they were like um, slabs of slate. Most of them were loose, even in those days. I came up there, feed the hopper, and down below, in the, behind those rusty looking doors with a pipe that's coming down from the mill upstairs and they come down there put a bag underneath and they came out like oats rolled oats and by here where that sign is there should be a big uh, drum or a big tank of diesel and there's a wall by here put up on the wall got a nice look in front of the tractor and now it's here we came the other day with a cow shed. Mervyn had a contract with Butlins and Barry for the pig's will. 
you know, for what the what the holly makers didn't have or didn't eat, they go in a bin. There'd be knives and forks and plates and spoons, all in these bins, because behind there was a door. And that used to feed that used to go into the farmyard, the back of there. But these here were pig, pig, pig cuts, and one year we were down here and we had to go in there and get the pigs up because they, they died. They were dead, they lost um, I don't know, four or five pigs, two or three in each, that one and that one there. We'd have to go in there in the dark, in the back, because they couldn't see nothing, and feel your way around and find a pig and pull it out and it's flesh or it's skin will come off in your hands. All these bloods are revolting. And these here, these pig stays here are okay. It's a big trough. A feeding trough in them. Oh, there's one there. And these are tin sheet. It's like um, half a, um, a pipe. You know, like a china pipe. And we should go in there. And this field where I said we used to plant spuds from down up to the river. Well, this is here. And I come right up here to here. And uh, I, I get off, I have a fag by here. It'll be a slow job. Went all the way back down there to that little bridge right down there. And we may have had um, half spuds, half cabbages and maybe a small bit of um, swedes or turnips as a feed of the cattle. They had um, down a the farm, there was like um, a pulper. It looked, well, it looked like, um, it looked like a bit like a mango, a big wheel on it, a big handle on it, and you fed the turnips into the hopper and you turned this bloody handle Guy's bloody hard work, but uh, yeah, we enjoy it. And the women here to cut the pick the spuds, there'd be Millie Armand, um, Mrs. Baldwin, a few four more of us, I can't remember their names. But all bent over picking spuds. Uh, they really were good days. Like I say, that wasn't, um, it was cast iron in those days. And I winded up, took that latch off, took the spanner off, and just let them drop. And like I say, cast iron, and they just go down there like a sack of, well, I don't to say the word, but you. Over there, on that bit of ground there, the house. I didn't know until several years later I saw a photograph. But there's a house over there, a two-story house. So I must have been doing something to do a slew this year for the Mary Griffith and the canal. Because the water's come down here, down to uh, past the Malin and to the water pump. The water wheel. There's a pump, apparently. And that's a pump water back into a canal that, that it had lost. Somewhere along the line. So it must have been something to do with that. The fellow in his house by here. Perhaps he looked after this uh, sluis. Like I said, I saw an otter over there oh, a long, long, long time ago. And also by here, down here, when your father was alive, Steve, we saw a family of mink down in here. He took a photograph of them. And there's a the parents and about three or four cubs in there. This path wasn't here then either, it's a bridle way now. But this wasn't here, it's all part of the field, so you can imagine doing about uh, the field to come right over to here, right up to here. So you can imagine doing about one mile an hour planting spuds in January. Oh god be bloody cold. And you come on the bottom of a fag. Couldn't smoke on the... Couldn't smoke on the... On the tractor. Ricky, come here! As I was saying then, before going to interrupt it. The fella came up here with a big, um... 
husky dog. I'd go with Ricky, but that's what this is. So my dog, he has to go with other dogs. He had to go with a lot wider and today he's had a big dog, so. But anyway, getting back to the farm. You can right down here with the spuds, right down. Like I say, you can right down to here with the spuds, right down here to this path one here, as I said earlier. This path one here, so you can right down to here, turn around. You have a flag, may as well turn a track around and you go back up there. And do the same thing again. Yes, the main silage clamp was in here. It was um, like a V-shaped made out of sleepers and uh, railway lines. And the railway lines came from the um, dismantling of the railway above Tiru and over the Walnut Tree Viaduct. And there we had a contract or something like that for all the sleepers. I remember coming on you one day in the farmyard with Percy and Dave, I think Dave was here, in a tractor with a big saw on the back, you know, crazy, no protective thing on you, I mean, sawing up these sleepers for posts, like fence posts and posts to put the, the net on for the beans at the top field. There's another lad who's come down here. I'd forgotten all about him. Well, actually, two, actually. One of the boys, something about like Holland from Town Green I can see him now. He had blonde hair. And another boy, who could have been Green Highlog in uh, Richard, Georgie Reese. He lives in Craigan now, I think. And, uh, yes, yeah, the pigs. They'd be running up the up the, up the railway line up over there, as far as away, and they were everywhere. They were everywhere, like a free for all sort of thing. And I'd call them. I say, pig, 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 and I pick their ears up, and they come because I used to feed them sow slabs. A sow slab would be in a big paper sack. 56 pound bag and they'd be about um, 4 inches square by about um, just over half inch thick and they loved them and Robbins used to do his net because I used to give him well I used to feed him twice a day I can't, yeah, but if I couldn't see them in the field I just shut up big 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 and they'd come charging down the field to where the dairy is there's a little, like, um, a little wall by there they come charging down to there I'll show you now in a minute at the end of that building, a white building on the left, there's a little wall, there's like a little style. And I'd be shouting out, pick, 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 pick. These trees were in here then, there's nothing there. And you can see them come charging down, they'll be at the railway end, far as away. They'll be everywhere. There's 20 or 30 pigs. And, uh, yeah. I used to feed them so slobs. I got a bag of so slobs out the barn. Robins didn't like it, but I did. And the pigs did as well, they loved them. I remember one year down here, we had pheasants. And a pheasant had been hanging up in our tool shed till the maggots were on it, you know, until it was really ripe. And uh, Peggy cooked it, I can see it now, we all had some. We had a dark, rich meat, it was lovely. And we had um, spuds from the farm, peas maybe, and cabbage, lots of gravy. Oh yeah, they're really happy days, and um, I think I'd do it all again if I had the chance. Mervyn had a brother, Arthur, and he farmed in Pentabane. I'm in the van here, yeah, quite a bit, um, you know. Mervyn had a brother, Arthur, and he filmed, um, he farmed Pentabane Farm in uh, where that big water tower is in um, Pentabane and Fairwater. That's where his farm was. I used to go there periodically, happened over there. Richie Haynes used to live on the polo field, he ran the place. He was better, well, Terry used to work in Cardiff Park, cutting the grass. And uh, he used to go there periodically, happened with the hay, 
and uh, I think Arthur's wife was called Peggy as well. She's a miserable bugger she was. But they had a daughter, Megan. Megan was about the same age as Pamela. They looked like sisters, actually. And, yeah, like I said, we should go over there. And other times, we'd be standing in the doorway of the dairy and come dinner time or whatever. We'd be waiting, are they going to call us in for dinner or what? And some, cause sometimes they would and sometimes they wouldn't. So you'd be up there starving. And this is why me and Percy one day went on the chicken shed and pinched 36 eggs, maybe more. And um, I used to pinch eggs all the time. They had a boiler in there in the dairy, the old fashioned gas boiler. I'm sure you must have seen him, galvanized with um, a gas ring underneath. I used to put the eggs in there and uh, help ourselves when no one was looking. There's that, that little part on, right on the end there, there with the bedroom on top. That's where we should go. Yeah, sometimes they would call us in for dinner and sometimes they wouldn't. And if they didn't, well, we'd help ourselves. We threw a few eggs. You wouldn't miss them. Too bad if we did. <laughs> 